overcoming life difficulties is not as difficult as you may think when you understand the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Yes, problems in life can be easily solved. A way to success can happen. And, you know, I like the messages I get from A Course in Miracles that helps me realize and, and understand, I guess, more deep within what the gifts of healing really are. Hey everyone, James Nussbaumer, and welcome to A Better Life Podcast. Today is Monday morning, bright and early at 6 a.m. on February 26th, 2018, and I'm so glad that you're joining me on this bright and early. It's not really bright, like I said before, but it's getting to be a bright day. The forecast is calling for sunny skies here in Northeast Ohio, where I'm at. Let me take a sip of coffee. But as we talk about overcoming life difficulties and, and how it can be answered on the tandem bicycle ride, which was what we talked a little bit briefly last week. And so that prompted uh, some of my readers and followers to uh, message me. And in particular, I wanna answer in today's message, about uh, Connor and Ann, a, a question that they had sent in to Facebook, messaged me there. They live in Elsdon, uh, a little small town in Northeast England. And they say it was a major uh, capital city at one time, during way back during the medieval times. Boy, you know, that's something it, us in the United States here, we don't seem to, re we just cannot comprehend that because our country is not that old. Of course, everybody knows that, um, but you know, just to live, but now the, now the town, I guess, is a small little town, Elsdon, and uh, I guess it attracts some uh, some visitors there, so maybe you might want to visit there. I don't know, Connor and Ann, but anyways, they went on to ask me, you know, last week you talked about um, the tandem bike ride. They said that they liked that. So that's what I'm, why I brought this up. But they said they also read in my books where I talk about, you know, God doesn't judge us as being good or bad. And that's just the being, the judging of good or bad is something that man decides to do. Humankind decides to do in his own mind, whether someone is good or bad. And she, and she says she, she agrees with that. She can see it, but as she tries to analyze it a little bit, which is like I warn people, don't, don't try to analyze some things. Just, you know, let it flow across your brain. So, um, Connor and Ann, I want to answer that question today, and we're going to dive into that really deeply here about, you know, how do we, you know, know what we're led to do and and, you know, how, how can we get help when we need to overcome life difficulties or when we're faced with a problem, something that's just really pulling us down or we're worried over something going on in life, in our family, with our children, you know, anything. And how can we bring gifts of healing to us? First of all, before I go on, let me say that I hope that you will follow me on YouTube. If you're reading, uh, if you're listening to this from YouTube and you've been reading my uh, blog articles at my blog, you will see in the header above and the footer below a, U a YouTube icon. You can click on that and it will take you to subscribe to YouTube. In fact, I think, yeah, you'll just be subscribed there. And if you're already at YouTube, just please subscribe right now while you are listening to me. But before I go on to talk about, you know, each time that we keep our problems of life to ourselves, that, you know, that there is no resolution and we, we need to, to have our inner guidance system lead the way and ask for help. Well, before I go on, I want to tell you something, a funny story. I'm sure all of you listening to me remember the late, the late Zig Ziglar. Another step, sip of coffee. Well, Zig Ziglar um, 
was really one of the first motivational people that I have ever listened to when I was kind of young, and he was young too, and I just immediately was drawn to the man. But Zig Ziglar told a story about an old uh, a rancher, cattle rancher in Texas in the old days, not real old days, because the guy had a swimming pool, which I'm going to get to, but Zig Ziglar told this story. This old Texas rancher, I'm going to try to talk a little bit like Zig Ziglar with that Texas draw, but Zig Ziglar had told the story, and he said that um, the rancher had a, a daughter that was uh, at the coming out age, and, and the rancher's wife had died several years ago, and so the rancher had mostly raised the daughter on his own, and he was a you know, millionaire, millionaire, and she was the only multi-millions of dollars, just a big, huge estate in Texas and a ranch. And she was the only one that would be the heir. And he was worried that he might not have grandchildren or he was worried that his daughter would never meet a, a man and have a happy married life and all this. And he was just worried to death over, you know, the, the future of his daughter. You know, so he prayed and prayed and asked for guidance on, on you know, what he should do. And he decided that he was going to have a coming out party for his daughter. And he invited all the single men in from hundreds of miles around and told the story and then got it out there that you know he's having a coming out party for, for his daughter and and that uh, if she meets the right uh, man, then uh, he is going to be sole heir to his whole estate, his entire estate, once he deceases one day. Because she was all he had. There was no one else. The rancher had no brothers, no sisters, no other family to, to leave his entire fortune to other than his daughter. So anyone that would marry his daughter would have everything. Oh my gosh, let me tell you, the, the, the boys, the men, the young men, the boys, whatever, they were coming into town and came to this party. And he had a swimming pool in the backyard. It was going to be a barbecue. He's going to have the old, uh, you know, old fashioned barbecue with, a pork, uh, a pork roasted out there and, and, and all the fixings and, and swimming in the swimming pool and all that. But what he had done, well, not swimming in the swimming pool, I'm getting ahead of myself. But what he had done ahead of time that no one knew about is he had filled his Olympic size swimming pool and filled it with alligators, live alligators. So as they were standing around, uh, all the men were there, uh, the, the, the boys, the young men were uh, standing around at the barbecue and around the pool area there. And, and the rancher said, you know, I want to tell you anything. You know, anybody that wants to uh, marry my daughter, I'm, I'm willing to give my daughter's hand in marriage to any one of you that can prove to me that you are adequate and that you are the, the one for my daughter. Now, you have to keep in mind, whoever wins my daughter over will be sole heir to all that I'm worth. And you will just step right into being a millionaire yourself. Now, here's what we're going to do. I want everyone to line up at the end of the swimming pool, all you guys, you young men and, and, and boys, young, line up at the end of the swimming pool. And when I blow the whistle here, we want you to jump in. I want you to jump in and swim to the other side. It's an Olympic length, and once you get to the other side, if you are the first to get to the other side, I will be there to greet you, and I will give you my daughter's hand in marriage. Well, before the whistle blew, a man jumped in the swimming pool, and he started swimming to the other end. Unbelievably got to the other end without getting eaten by the alligators. And the other, the other men and boys were on the other end in, in awe and amazed of this. And so he got out of the swimming pool all wet and everything, and the rancher said, congratulations, congratulations, sons. You, you have just, I am handing my daughter's, I'm giving you my daughter's hand. You can marry her if you want, and you will be my son-in-law, and you will be the heir to my entire fortune. Do you have anything you want to say? Do you have any questions? And the young man, soon out of boyhood, 
said to the rancher, yeah, man, I want to know who that dude was that pushed me in the swimming pool. <laughs> okay. Each time you keep problems to yourself, each, pro each time you keep problems of life for yourself to solve or judge that that is a problem that has no resolution. You know, you are only making it tougher on yourself to heal your own problems of life and for correction of errors to occur. You know, I want to state that A Course in Miracles asks us to not deny the miracle of justice. You know, I hope there was justice in that young man uh, marrying that woman, and I hope they ended up having a long-lasting relationship. So who knows what ended up with that, with that marriage. So anyways, let's get back to the subject at hand here. But, you know, like many people, I, myself, always saw God as an observer out there, a judge keeping track of things I did wrong. And I want to bring back and keep in mind to answer the question from uh, Connor and Ann in Elsden, Northeast England, not New England, Northeast England, uh, United Kingdom. And uh, about, you know, God doesn't judge us, good or bad. You know, what man, it's something that man has just decided that this is good and this is bad. Of course, there are bad. I mean, sure, we have bad, but it's bad. And we know the difference between good and bad and what not to do. But my point is, is that, you know, no one um, has the power to make judgments over us because no one knows what's going on in our heart. No one knows what's going on in our mind. But like many people, I always saw God as an observer, a judge keeping track of things that I did wrong. You know, and this would determine if I would go to heaven or hell, I would think. Of course, we all think that. And I was seeing God as somewhere out there. And before we move on, let me add that this is why I often urge that you learn how to do mindfulness meditation. It is a great technique for inner healing and going within, I say, to the alpha state, to where your real power sits. You know, I can't begin to tell you of this being how the world's most successful icons have found their way to success. I read that Henry Ford meditated all the time. He had had Eastern practices from back then, you know, from East, from the Far East. Henry Ford, yes, had had incorporated Eastern practices into his life in a way. Of course, he didn't run around town bragging about it. That's what he just did. His bragging was in showing what he could do with the Ford Motor Company. But I, I think you see where I'm getting at here. And if, if not, hang on. But what I'm trying to say is when I recognized myself, my true source better, it seemed as though my true source of life, source with a capital S, when I, when, I re when I recognized my true source better, it seemed to me as though life had been like a bicycle ride on a tandem bike. You know, the tandem bike were the most, the, the powers in the front, and then the person in the back goes along for the ride, but helps to pedal and has to lean and everything too when you, you know, go around a curb and all that. But I always saw God you know, or my inner guidance system, however you want to term that, I always saw my inner guidance system. I always saw God in the back, like as a helper to whom I would pray to when I needed help pedaling. I thought I had to like, you know, ask him to please pedal harder for me, God. <laughs> Can you imagine that, asking God to pedal harder for you? Well, what had hit me? Let me tell you what had hit me. You know, then it hit me and my position on the bike was corrected, but not only when I faced problems of life, including things like relationship struggles and, uh, you know, so much more. But, and before you read on, if there are some relationship struggles, before you read on, when I say before you read on, before you read on within yourself, as to where you are 
going. You know, before you think and dwell on what lies ahead of you, you know, before you decide that, you know, write your own script that you're just doom and gloom is waiting on you, you know, I want you to keep in mind one thing that you write the script of your life. And when you write it, you are reading the script of your life. And as you read what you had written, then that becomes your life. I, does that make sense? You know, let me get back to saying, you know, God then suggested to me that I get off the bicycle and get on the back again. But, you know, this time taking the back seat, the seat behind him on the tandem bike. Well, okay, you know, so then, you know, I was instruct, I was instructed to let the Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit, which the Course in Miracles has taught me, and, and I just know that it's true, I was instructed to let the Holy Spirit, which is my whole divine inner self, yes, it's us connected, the Holy Spirit is you, you are the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is not out there like some ghostly thing. The Spirit of God is you. In our connection. That's why we're all connected together, because we're all the Spirit of God. But I was instructed to let the Holy Spirit, my whole and divine inner self, to go ahead and take the front seat. In other words, I, when I did that, I'm letting my ego go, because he knows the path that God had laid out for my purpose. Now, you know, I see the journey ahead of me now, and, you know, at that time, I was seeing the journey ahead of me differently. Now, when I say that time, I'm talking about when I was writing this and that I'm bringing this subject up to you about is I was in prison at the time. And I, I felt as though when I had control, I thought I knew what I needed to do. I thought I knew the road ahead. And this would be when the problems of life once again would hit me. You know, I was often fearful and uncertain where I was heading, especially from that volatile and often violent den of the cell block. I didn't know what was going to happen to me, but I, I kept on writing, and here I am today. So, but when I, let me get back to the tandem bike. So when I was on the bike by my, I mean, leading the way by myself and, you know, maybe asking once in a while for the Holy Spirit or for God to help pedal and help me, you know, asking for favors. But when I screeched to a stop at the brick wall where I had just about crashed, he took the lead and it's been that way ever since. You know, my prison confinement, for those of you that know me, and for those of you that don't know me, as I would write in book two of the series, and book two is called Mastering Your Own Spiritual Freedom. By the way, the first book is called The Master of Everything. It tells the whole story of what happened and what led me to eight years in prison, actually a 10-year prison term, uh, but I was released after eight from a higher court Another judge had found out that I never really should have went to prison at all in the first place. My prison sentence was overtly political. Yes, it was. And as a financial advisor, I'd made a mistake. And it was at a time when uh, panic and abuses were going on in the investment industry. And But the problem could have been corrected in other ways uh, rather than me going to prison because I had ended up paying... Uh, money and to get the people's uh, the people that had lost money had I made them whole and it was a it was a situation that I describe in my books it was a very very touchy issue there and um, but uh, 
you know, an angry judge just felt that he needed to set an example. But we're not going on about that. But, you know, because that you can read more about that in my books. And I tell the whole story there. Actually, book three is on its way out now. And also, by the way, you know, and, and what it went down, I, I, you know, the whole story never really had, had come out because I had trusted my lawyer. But, you know, had I not trusted my lawyer and got another lawyer who knew better, the story of what really happened would have came out and I would have never went to prison. But then again, I would have never ran into the idea of getting off the tandem bike and getting into the back seat. So my guide is taking me on some my inner guide, the Holy Spirit, is taking me on some unbelievable, unbelievable cuts up mountains and through rocky places and, and at breakneck speed. Whew, I tell you, that eight years in that hellhole was something. But it was a path that God had built, and I now feel like it's all I can do to hang on. As much of it is, you know, looked like madness, especially at the time I was going through this. It was all looked like madness. I was just, my gosh, this is insane. State prisons. I was in a state prison, and they are just terrible. You are in with um, everybody's mixed together. It's it's, uh, it's a lot of life sentences. A lot of people doing life sentences. But you know, I was there, and I and I was like feeling like. You know, all I could do, I'm doing all that I can do to hang on. But as much of it has looked like madness now that I look back, especially there while I was in prison, I can now see, and I remember thinking that my guide would keep telling me to keep pedaling. But now as I look back, I see more on how he really was telling me to pedal harder and pedal harder from the back of the tandem bike. But you know, sometimes I worry, and like we all do, and often I'm anxious, asking, where are you taking me now that I'm on the back seat of the tandem bike? Where are you taking me? Well, my inner guide just laughs and convinces me to trust him. Let me take another sip of coffee. And uh, it seems I have forgotten my troublesome and problematic past and all the problems of life and rather have entered into his adventure, which really is mine. I hope that makes sense. If I'm the spirit of God and he's got an adventure for me, well, then I, if I'm of him, then it's my adventure too. And that's the way I'm looking at it. And that's what makes things a lot easier. You know, my guide, my inner guide, the Holy Spirit, he seems to be taking me places into people I need to meet, even while I was there in prison. I was receiving gifts from the Holy Spirit while in there. There were certain people I met, believe it or not, which is told in my second book, mostly this part, what I want to say, that I'd met a certain man in prison that who had came through and helped me out like you would not believe. Well, by the way, when you're done listening to this video, uh, there's an article at my blog, I hope maybe you might want to visit, that will show you more about clearly understanding total forgiveness and opening your mind to when other people kind of enter your life for unknown reasons. They're there for a reason. They were sent there for a mission to help you. I think that makes sense to you, don't you think? Think back if you're listening to me. I'm sure someone had entered your life unexpectedly somewhere along the line that maybe gave you some advice or helped you or pointed you in a direction or something like that. Well, I'm not going to dwell on this like, um, you know, like we're in elementary school here. Um, if you're at a point where you want more understanding, I urge you to read my books. Um, you know, gifts of healing, acceptance, and joy. I would have to say that 
for me, acceptance has been my most treasured gift, just acceptance that I know that I'm being guided. You know, I know that I'm on a journey now that is at one and whole with the purpose of all things, which is the universe. Let's talk about gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, my guide, the Holy Spirit, is your guide too. Your guide. He's my guide. He's all of our guide. He's within us. The Holy Spirit is the true essence of who we are. The truth in you, as you're listening to me right now, the truth in you of who you are and how you're thinking about things, that is the Holy Spirit in you. The, when you're thinking from truth and not from fantasy, the Holy Spirit has gifts that heal, and he has been showing me how to give gifts back. And many times the recipients don't even realize that I'm giving back. But that's okay. I'm finding out that in my giving, I continue to receive, and my burden does seem light, and problems of life don't seem really like problems anymore. <laughs> you ever been through that? You know, or you worried yourself to death over things and all of a sudden somebody came through to help you out and it lightened your load a little bit there. Well, you know, it was scary at first when I had gotten off the uh, tandem, the front side, the front part of the tandem bike and to the back and, and to accept my guide and allow him to be the first on the tandem bicycle ride. But I see now that, you know, he has the secrets knowing how to take us around those sharp corners and ride over those places filled with rocks where it's bumpy and rough through scary places like where I was for eight years in a state penitentiary. He knows how to get us through that if we let him follow rather than our own selves taking the lead. I mean our physical body taking the lead. We we'll put our physical body out of the picture and let the inner true essence of who we are, which is the Holy Spirit, let that take the lead. You're on your way. But as I would learn from A Course in Miracles, the Holy Spirit's undoing of my own errors, and I say undoing, meaning he reverses the er your errors in thinking in your mind if you ask him and if you if you are open to it he has the undoing of his heirs has taught me to just keep on pedaling <laughs> yes even in the strangest of places such as where i was sitting at that time in that volatile and often violent din of the cell cell block and i mean violent with no exaggeration i would often write letters to a friend of mine who wrote me consistently, my friend Ron, you'll know about him if you read my books, and, and other people that had written me and I'd written back to, Dirty Mike and uh, a, another guy named Ralph and another guy named Bill. And, uh, you know, I, I would say to them in letters, I, I would say, I'm telling you, this place is terrible. I would say how terrible, it's a hell on earth with no exaggeration. I would tell them that I can exaggerate and it wouldn't be exaggeration. That's how bad it was. But you know, anyways, however as nasty as my surroundings were at that time and in those moments, I was able to see messages in my view and they were meaningful. You know, when I would feel tired or fed up as I often did, then there was a part of me, the Holy Spirit, he would just smile at me and say, keep on pedaling. <laughs> and that's really the truth. You know, if you've enjoyed this, there's another related article that's similar to this you might like at my blog. It's called Overcome Life Difficulties. You can just go to my blog area and key in Overcome Life Difficulties by finding purpose and exploring your passions. Before I close, I want to say that I invite you to sign up for my Everyday Miracles newsletter, the free version of the newsletter, if you, are, if you don't have it. And also, consider when you are ready to join my mastermind group, which is not a free version, but there's no pressure on you to do that. 
the, the free version is, is uh, a good thing for you, for anyone who wants to learn how to put their spirit in charge and, and let the ego take a back seat. And I also invite you to join me on Twitter. I just love Twitter for some reason. Please follow me on Twitter. I, I For some reason, I am getting more followers than ever before on Twitter. And the messages are awesome. Facebook, too, I love. And I get messages all the time from Facebook. And if you would like me to talk about something next week, message me on Facebook or Twitter, either one, and just say, hey, James, would you talk about this? Just like Connor and Ann uh, from Elsdon, England, in Northeast England. Hey, Connor and Ann, if you were listening, I hope I answered your question about, you know, why God doesn't judge us good or bad. He just wants us to get off the front of the tandem bike and put him in the front seat and let us just follow his spirit to the journey of our true free will. Please support my work. Many have benefited from this material that I offer and I, you know, offer you access to a lot of things and so I just hope that you'll support my work and continue to follow me and give me suggestions. And, you know, I've, I've had a little bit of hate mail from people that disagree, but not really anything to be alarmed about. Just certain people that um, don't really agree with being in the back of the tandem bike. They think that they should be on the front of the tandem bike. Those are the people that don't agree with me. But like I said, it's nothing major. So I hope you'll join me. I hope you'll follow me. And I hope that you will continue enjoying the inner beauty that you are inside. And I hope that you will learn, if you haven't already, to extend that inner beauty to the world, because when you extend the natural awesomeness that's in you to the world, it makes you happy, and that makes the world a better place. And when the world is a better place, you are in a better place. And when you are in a better place, the world is also in a better place. It works both ways. Hey, I gotta go now because I'm um, going over the limit here a little bit, but at least it woke me up this morning and it's gonna be a beautiful day and I'm hoping you're having, having a beautiful day yourself. Whatever it is you decide to listen to this. But remember, get on the back of the tandem bike, but keep on pedaling. James Nussbaumer signing off, God bless.